everybody, Jamie Troll here, your favorite CPA, financial literacy coach, and profit strategist. And I have some important updates. This is breaking news. Right now I'm recording this at nighttime, March 3rd, 2021. We just got some new guidance, and this guidance specifically re relates to uh, what was announced last week around the fact that PPP, they were gonna change the calculation for self-employed people, for, um, for people who were independent contractors and the like, right? So we've been waiting for actual guidance to see exactly what this was gonna look like, what's the calculation going to look like, how's it going to work, and we finally have it. So they came out with a new interim final rule. There are a couple new applications out there now. So I wanted to talk it through these changes with you so you knew whether or not this impacted you and how it would impact you. So let's get right on into it. The major changes include the fact that now Schedule C filers, and they have clarified within this guidance, this relates to Schedule C filers only. So if you are a partnership, if you are an S Corp, if you are a C Corp, this does not apply to you. This is only to people who file a Schedule C. That includes sole proprietors um, and LLCs who are non S Corp. So that would be most people who would consider themselves self employed, independent contractors et cetera. You file a Schedule C with your typical tax return, okay? So this applies to you. It applies to you whether you have employees or you don't, as long as you are filing on a Schedule C. So that was something we were waiting for confirmation of. Looks like it does apply to those who have employees too, although the calculation is a little bit different. So what's changing? Well, let's take it back to where we were, right? Let's go back. And previous to this, since April of last year, the application uh, when you would apply, your loan amount would be calculated based off your Schedule C line 31, which is net profit. That's your revenue minus your expenses, right? So that's the amount that's left at the end of the day. That's the amount you could take, divide by 12, multiply by two and a half to get your the amount that you could get as a loan to pay yourself with. That was what was considered owner pay. So if you had employees, you added that on to your payroll for your employees to figure out what it would be. Or if you were self-employed without employees, you would only um, use that amount. So that's how we've been doing it for a long time. However, there was concerns around that because of the fact that a lot of people who file a Schedule C maybe have a very small net profit, maybe they're even negative, and that could be driven by a couple of things. That could be driven like th by things like maybe you took a lot of depreciation in one year. It, it could be a lot of reasons that you have a low or no net profit, which would make you ineligible to really be able to get anything out of the PPP program. And so to remedy that, now they're saying you can get it by using gross receipts instead of by using um, your net profit. So that's line seven is what they're going with, which is essentially money that came into your business, less your cost of goods sold for the most part. And that's your gross receipts. So line seven now divided by 12 times two and a half. Now in either case, one thing that hasn't changed is it still maxes out. To pay yourself, you can get $20,833 maximum. You might get less, but $20,833 maximum. Why is that the calculation? Well, it's because they max you out at $100,000. So if your net profit previously was over $100,000, you already got $20,833. That's how you could have calculated it previously. Um, same thing applies with gross receipts. So if it's over $100,000, it's gonna cap at that $100,000, which is gonna calculate out to $20,833. Okay, so that hasn't changed. So if you already got your PPP loans or you're in the process of applying and you already have a net profit over $100,000, this wouldn't change anything for you. Now, real quick, let's talk about people who are employers. If you have employees, how does this work, right? So if you have employees, you're gonna take your, you're gonna calculate your payroll for your employees the same way using your 941s, right? And you're gonna calculate out what two and a half months worth is of that. And then to figure out your owner pay, you're gonna take that line seven and you're gonna subtract a couple of other lines on your tax return. So the other lines that you are going to subtract are line 14, 19, and 26. So this, again, this is only if you have W-2 employees, you're gonna subtract, you're gonna take line seven minus line 14, 19, and 26. Then you're gonna take that number up to a max of 100,000, divide by 12 times two and a half. And that's the owner pay that you'll add on top of the amount you were gonna get for your employees, okay? 
I'm going to give you a link here at the end to actually go see this interim final rule so you can read this. It's a little bit easier to read than it is to uh, listen, I'm sure, and, and really um, understand what I'm saying. So I always recommend that you guys actually read the guidance because I think it can help you really understand what's going on in a deeper way. So I'll show you where to find that here at the end, but that's how it's going to work. Now, a lot of you guys right now are probably asking, okay, great, cool, but like, does this apply to me if I already got a PPP loan? Can I go back and retroactively get more if you would have gotten more by using gross receipts? Unfortunately, guidance confirms as of right now, no, you cannot. Um, right now it's saying basically there's no mechanism to go back and to uh, increase those loans. Whatever, if you've already had your loan approved, and by approved, I believe that means getting an SBA ETRAN number. If you've already gotten that, even if you haven't been funded yet, there's not really anything you can do. So that's the unfortunate thing, is that this is really coming back on the people who were on it and who were um, you know, really trying to, to get in there and needed the cash and got in there and got, the, got their loans, and now they can't go back and get more. And it, it is unfortunate. Now, if you already got a first, draw under one way and you're eligible for a second draw, meaning you have that 25% drop in gross receipts for one quarter of 2020 versus one quarter of 2019, then you can use the new rules for that. But again, if it's not for loans that have already been applied for at this point. So I know that sucks. I know that's not what people want to hear. Uh, if this is something that would make a really huge difference to you, it doesn't hurt to call your congressperson and uh, let them know how you think um, and what you really think about this change and how it could impact you if they made it retroactive. I think they're doing this for a few reasons. I think it's partially because of the time frame. It's only through March 31st. They've only got um, roughly $140 billion of funding left, which seems like a lot, and it is, but they would not have enough to go back and give everybody back to gross receipts, more than likely. So they are probably trying to avoid all of that and uh, just simplify it. It would also be a massive strain on the banks um, to, to be able to accommodate those changes. So I think that's why they've decided that they're not going to go back and do that. But it is unfortunate, I know, for a lot of you guys. But if you're applying in the future, this can apply to you. Um, couple other things to mention. They, you can use the loan for the same things, right? Six, at least 60% payroll. Um, most everything else is pretty similar to what we already knew about PPP. The one thing though that jumped out at me in here that I wanted to point out to you guys is that, let's flash back again. We're gonna flash back, back to April 2020 again. Remember that when you are doing this loan application, there is a line on it that says essentially that you are certifying to the fact that uh, the loan is necessary given economic uncertainty. So you have to have to sign off on that when you're applying for the loan. Now, back in April 2020, everybody lost their minds on this because they worried that, wait a second, hang on, are they going to come after me and audit me? And am I going to have to show them that I needed the loan? And then are they going to tell me that I could have pulled from my savings or something else, right? Are you going to get in trouble for taking these loans out? And so what they did at that time was they put this new safe harbor uh, rule in that said, as long as your loan was under $2 million, you would be assumed to have made that um, certification in good faith, meaning that you meant what you said, that you needed the loan and that they're not going to go search out unless there's some other reason for them to believe that there's fraud involved, right? But they're not gonna necessarily go search out and, and audit these uh, to find people uh, and pick apart their situation and tell them that they shouldn't have gotten a loan. So that gave us all a little bit like, okay, we feel better now. Well, let me tell you, now, with these new rules, they've taken that away for people who apply using gross receipts, line seven, now with the new, the new guidance. If you apply and your line seven is above $150,000, that safe harbor does not apply to you. They will be auditing a subsection at least of those loans, and you should be prepared if you are applying with, an, with a gross receipts number of above $150,000, you should be uh, prepared to tell them why it was necessary due to economic uncertainty, okay? So all that is to say, make sure that you are paying attention to what that line is. 
Uh, I probably wouldn't, to be honest, unless you know you can support it. Um, apply using gross receipts if your your line seven is above $150,000. I would either use net profit or use a different year. So remember, you can use 2019 or 2020 when you're making this calculation. So you want to kind of keep these things in mind and what these triggers are going to be when you decide what you're going to apply using. But if that is over that amount, I would uh, think twice. Why are they doing that? Well, it's a fraud prevention technique because they want to prevent people who shouldn't be getting additional money from getting it, right? So I think the thought process there is, well, if you are making that much money, right, if you have that much in gross receipts in your business, then you probably have access to capital through other ways, maybe some savings, et cetera, et cetera, that you could tap into. This PPP loan is probably not uh, necessary to you. Whether that's true or not, I feel like <laughs> it's, a, it's a very broad brush to paint and a very random line to draw, but I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that because that could be impactful when you're making a decision about how to apply for this loan. Okay, last thing I wanna do is actually jump into the Treasury website with you and show you exactly um, where you can find this information as well. So we're now looking at tre the Treasury website. Just go to treasury.gov. Right now, this is what it looks like. You're gonna go to read more under the COVID-19 relief and go to assistance for small businesses, learn more. And then you're gonna have this treasure trove of information about PPP. So you're gonna see under for borrowers, I would make sure that when you're looking at things on here, you're looking at the most relevant information, the most updated information. So right now, cause it's the 3rd of March, that is anything that says the 3rd of March or round about that time frame. So you can see now that they have a new um, second draw for uh, application for people using gross income, and then they have one, this is the first draw. So these are the two application forms. Again, you're gonna go through your bank to apply, but these are essentially the questions your bank is going to be asking you, so it may be worth it to get familiar with that. And then uh, when you scroll down on here, and like I said, there's a lot of information, so feel free to look around. They have updated recently the frequently asked questions. That might be useful. And then also down here at the bottom, interim final rule on loan amount calculation and eligibility originally posted 3-3-2021. That's the interim final rule I'm talking about here. So this is one that's worth a read. I know it's 32 pages, uh, but it's worth a skim through at least to find the information that you need. There's a lot of really great information about this specific change to gross receipts in here. Um, so I wanna make sure that you are using this and reading through this to understand all the rule changes. And like I said, uh, you can continue to monitor in here because you're gonna get see any new information that's been released is gonna be in here. Now I would be careful using you know things that are way old. So some of this stuff is back from April of 2020, probably not overly impactful at this time, has probably changed six ways over. Um, so look for the most recent information when you are looking at this website. Okay guys, so hopefully you found that helpful. I wanted to get this information out as soon as possible because I know so many people are trying to make decisions on what to do. I do recommend that you take some action though. Uh, we've only got a couple of weeks left at this point of this program being open. Right now for the next, call it seven days until I believe March 9th, all the applications are blocked for only um, people who have 20 employees or less. So if that's you, you might wanna go ahead and get that an application started. You can still apply after March 9th, it's not a problem, but it's gonna be open to other businesses as well. Uh, I do think you're gonna want to um, get your hat in the ring as quickly as you can. These are taking longer, so don't wait until the last second and then be upset when you miss out. Uh, go ahead and apply, apply, apply. Make sure that you find a bank that's taking it based on gross, gross receipts, gross income, if that's what you are planning to apply based off of, okay? Um, so. Hopefully that was helpful. Come and uh, join us in my group. I have a Facebook group, jamietrell.com forward slash group. We're having all of these discussions over there about what banks to apply with, what experiences people are having, any updates on these things. Um, you can go to uh, Facebook and just search for financial literacy for women business owners. That's another way to find it and I'll link it below as well. Also make sure to subscribe to this channel because it makes me feel like you're giving me a big giant hug and that you enjoy the stuff that I'm giving you. Uh, and then you also don't miss any updates. So anyway, thank you guys. Have a wonderful night. I'm going to bed. <laughs>